Starting your Locker Natural Hair journey is oh so rewarding, but can be extremely stressful when you start to consider what products to use. If that's you, then look no further. Locklicious is a Black-owned company that has created an all-natural product line for locked and loose natural crowns. The Locklicious team works hard to ensure that their products are free of parabens, phthalates, sulfates, PEG, synthetics, and other toxic chemicals you find in other products. Best of all, the products are lightweight and will not leave residue or cause buildup. Go to Locklicious.com to start treating your crown like royalty. Yes, yes, welcome back to the African Diaspora News channel. My name is Richard Sudan. Thank you very much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe, support the platform and spread the word. Now, a video update for you today, which is something we've got to talk about. Today, we're going to talk about the thousands of mostly Haitian migrants who are in Del Rio, the small town in Texas, having crossed the border from Mexico into the United States. Now, there's a lot we could say about this, and I'm going to keep you updated about this story as it develops, but there's a few things right off the bat we need to get to the heart to, and I've been looking at this story closely over the last couple of days. Now, for those of you that don't know, and most of you would have seen the headlines, there's been literally thousands of migrants making their way from the South American continent uh, through Mexico and into the United States, uh, seeking refuge and sanctity uh, with the likelihood that they want to claim asylum. Now, the situation in Haiti has been a grave one, a tumultuous one, a difficult one, and it presents one of the biggest humanitarian crises on the planet right now. And, you know, let's be in no doubt the United States has definitely contributed historically to that humanitarian crisis and in the modern context. Of course, Haiti has been hit with several uh, natural disasters, including recently. And of course, we also saw the assassination of the Haitian president recently. And there are at least two US citizens potentially implicated in the assassination attempt. And a lot of people have also pointed to the failings of the security uh, apparatus in the United States. And other people have said there are potentially much more nefarious reasons or roles that the US have played in the destabilization of Haiti. Now, all of the things I've outlined mean that the situation in Haiti is untenable for most people. You're talking about poverty, destitution, um, a very unstable situation in Haiti, and that's led thousands of Haitians to leave uh, Haiti in recent years, in the recent times. Uh, many of them have actually had to remain in Mexico and other places in the South American continent, uh, waiting for their chance to get to the United States. Now, back to the uh, immediate situation and the way that the government is handling this. Now, some of you might not know but there's a certain aspect of public health law in the United States which the United Nations and hundreds of legal experts are saying is being exploited uh, by the US government to kick out black people uh, who want to get to the US. Uh, that legal uh, manoeuvre is done under what's known as Title 42. Title 42 is an aspect, a very niche aspect of public health law which was first used and introduced under the Trump era. Now, on the face of it, Title 42 gives the US government the um, supposed legal right to prevent people from even entering the US under the grounds that they might pr uh, present a certain uh, threat to the US under public health grounds and COVID-19. Uh, but the problem with this is that actually legal experts and a lot of humanitarian legal experts are saying actually uh, the use of Title 42, which Joe Biden promised um, to reverse, he promised to reverse the Trump era policies, they are saying that Title 42 actually goes against domestic law and also international law in the following sense. Um, under international law and also US law, people have the right to claim asylum legitimately in the US regardless of how they entered the country. Now the lawmakers, Alejandro Mayorkas, Kamala Harris, and the rest of Biden's uh, administration have you know, repeatedly emphasized that people need to enter the US 
in the correct manner. But actually, according to law and international law, regardless of how you enter the United States, once your feet are on the soil, you have the right to be processed and to have your claim heard because people flee very serious circumstances often created by the United States. But the exploitation of Title 42 has basically given customs officials and US border officials the right and the means and the authority to actually deport black Haitians uh, before they're even processed. Um, so in other words, the situation now and Title 42 came into being enacted in March of 2020. This gives all of these different border officials, border forces, the means to um, kick people out of the country or prevent them even entering the country under COVID-19 grounds. Now, the problem with this from the humanitarian sense, which is also not just a moral thing, there's a legal argument here too, is that there are all sorts of cases of these laws being exploited. There are cases and reports of people um, being brutalized, beaten, kicked out and deported from the country before they've had their claim to asylum um, heard. Um, there's the imagery, the powerful imagery of predominantly white men on horses uh, or men who identify as whites, literally beating with relish. Um, Haitian families, kids are in the mix too. And there's also reports I've seen online of people who didn't even embark on their journey from Haiti being deported back to Haiti. So not even, not just is Title 42 questionable, even if it was being enacted sort of um, as it um, is, is meant to be, even within the, you know, the law in itself is questionable, but even within the law, Title 42, you're seeing people being beaten and being expelled. Now, the situation at Del Rio is untenable. Um, at the time of this video broadcast, there's around 15,000 migrants. Again, I want to emphasize mostly black Haitian families um, at the border trying to get to the US, but that number will have probably exponentially grown by the time this video airs. Now, there's all sorts of demands for the Biden administration to lift um, the, the pace and the volume of deportations and removals of Haitians, um, but not just from the United Nations, not just from many legal experts. There was even a, a ruling by a federal judge about two weeks ago, and the federal judge said um, he ordered Joe Biden's government to stop deporting Haitian families and migrant families and to process them in the correct manner. Now, the judge at the time of this ruling, which was several days ago, uh, gave the Biden administration two weeks uh, to enact the ruling or to appeal the decision. Now, two things are happening here. Number one, predictably, the Biden administration is appealing the decision. They want to keep deporting uh, these predominantly black families out of the United States and even prevent them from entering the country using all sorts of means, including the Coast Guard, including border officials. Um, but it's not just that they want to um, appeal the decision. In the time between the judge's order and now, these deportations are being ramped up. Now, another aspect to this is that on the face of it, this is all being done under the justification of the law and COVID-19. But if you look at the images and the videos and the manner in which these people are being sort of penned in like animals at Del Rio, um, this in itself pre pre uh, presents a serious risk of COVID-19 because these people are being forced to wait um, to either be processed or deported in very cramped conditions indeed. And so the whole notion of all this being done to really sort of prevent COVID-19 from spreading is really sort of a, a thin air, you know? You need to only see the videos and the pictures which are coming out um, of Del Rio to see that this is not really about the law. This is not really about public health. This is about Joe Biden continuing a, a law, Title 42, the exploitation of it to get rid of migrants. But specifically now you're seeing uh, the majority of these people being affected are black Haitian uh, migrants. Now, of course, we all know that Haiti has been forever punished ever since Haiti had the temerity to be the first nation in the world to end slavery and to become the first black republic outside um, of Africa. Uh, they've been punished ever since for this. Of course, it's pretty much scrubbed out of the history books. But I want to make another point here. And this point is 
um, reflective of both the United States and also the United Kingdom. Because the reality here, and you can challenge me on this, if the migrants coming through the South American border were Australians, Europeans, Swedes, French, English, or from any of these European countries, and they were seeking sanctity in the United States, we all know the situation would be reversed. Far from the Coast Guard or these privatized border forces and patrols going out and beating and detaining black people, these resources would be used to go out and rescue these people. Or in the United Kingdom, and I don't know if you know this is happening, the Home Secretary now wants to literally turn away migrant boats in the English Channel coming to the UK from France. They want to have the means to turn these boats around. And if you know what that means and how dangerous the English Channel is as one of the most busy shipping channels in the world, this is basically a death sentence for a lot of the people trying to make their way across the English Channel. Um, if these migrants were white or from a different economic background or from countries that the US and the UK were allied with, they would be treated completely differently. But for me, the whole way that these Haitian migrants are being treated falls into the dark context of how Haiti has been continually punished, ostracized and maligned and exploited by the European powers ever since Haiti was the first nation to end slavery in 1804 following the revolution. So what Joe Biden and his administration are basically doing is pandering to this uh, white nationalism, this white supremacist thinking that has been building and has engulfed the United States in recent years. Um, I know there's a lot of people that have got fairly conservative views about this and everyone's got a different view about it. Um, but my understanding of the United States, and you can pull me up on this if you think I'm wrong, wrong is actually if the system was different, there's a, there's a humane way to uh, process these people and to bring them into the US without them necessarily um, presenting some sort of a, a, a roadblock to other communities. I don't believe this. This is an illogical fallacy. Um, the priority of the United States to bring about reparations and restorative justice for the descendants of slaves in the United States can be done while at the same time the United States can treat black Haitians with dignity, let them into the US and process them properly. The United States is a huge country with huge resources poured into the military industrial complex. Uh, we know that the sort of most richest and exploitative corporations, if you like, are not taxed properly. So this is not really a question of resources. I don't think we should fall into this kind of divide and rule mentality that European uh, colonialists and colonial, colonial mentality instilled in us. We need to be identifying these black Haitians as our brothers and sisters in need. They need to be treated with dignity. They need to be treated properly, given the chance to be processed um, under the law, and that is the law under the constitution. And then they need to be treated how any other families from a different hue would be treated. We're seeing the stories of, you know, uh, refugees from Afghanistan being aided, being given safe passage to the United States, because of course, you know, the US exploited Afghanistan for two decades. Um, but we're not seeing the same move with the Haitians, and that's because they're black. Go online and look at the videos of these thugs in uniforms, these border patrol officers and what have you in Mexico, which is in the pocket of the US and is doing the bidding of the US. Joe Biden appealed to the Mexican president to um, help stem the flow of migrants from Mexico into the US so Joe Biden could prevent even a situation on the border, which he's trying to do. That's failed. Haitians and black Haitians and all sorts of migrants are coming by the thousands to the United States. And the reality, again, is if they were from a different background, they would be treated completely differently. And there's a weird sort of bitter irony for me because all of the Biden administration or most of them are descended from immigrants. Alejandro Mayorkas in particular, he's a descendant of Cuban parents who literally fled, fled Cuba to the United States. Um, you know, to seek sanctity. Kamala Harris, who all of a sudden is not really being identified as black anymore and is being sort of, uh, her Asian background is being more emphasized. You know, of course she's not speaking up for the black Haitians. No one's speaking up for them. And these are people with families. Some of them have literally walked 
for weeks or months, traveled hundreds of miles. And actually, if you look at how uh, different migrant groups are treated in places like Mexico before they get to the US, if you listen to the charities and the experts and the people that analyze this, Black Haitians are often at the bottom of the pile in terms of receiving charity and support from groups and NGOs that are meant to be looking after migrants. They often receive medicine last. They often receive food last. They are often, as you know, um, receiving anti-black racism from the very same NGOs oftentimes and from other migrant groups too. So this is a massive humanitarian crisis in Del Rio. I think both the Mexican authorities and the US authorities have now stopped uh, the means from people to travel into Del Rio over the river, but it doesn't make a difference because, you know, these Haitian families are finding other routes along the border to enter the United States. Uh, the way to deal with this problem, problem, I don't really see it as a problem. Human beings are always going to flee persecution in search of safety. Uh, but the way to deal with this issue, if you like, is to give these people the chance to have their cases heard. Because these people are human beings with dignity, individual stories. These are people with families. These people are no different from you and I. And some of us actually may even share a lineage uh, with them. So the the way to deal with this is not to slam the border shut to literally deport and expel these people like literally there's reports of people that didn't even come from haiti being booted back to haiti um the way to deal with them is for people to demand and force a change in u.s policy stop exploiting the countries these people come from if you don't want migrants you don't want black haitians you don't want all these different communities knocking on your door then policies need to change um, but for all the people that really believed very um, deluded in a deluded fashion in my view all the people that thought Biden was really going to tackle anti-black racism and that's what the treatment of Haitians represents but let's be clear about that for anyone that thought this was going to present a break in policy Biden is ramping up the deportation of Haitians and I'll end this video on this because I don't know if you watching this know this. In the first few months, I think the first three months of Joe Biden's administration, the first three months of Biden being in office, he deported more Haitians from US soil back to Haiti than Donald Trump did for the whole of 2020. So there you have it. That's Joe Biden's administration in a nutshell for you. I want to thank you for tuning in and watching this video. I'll keep you up to date as this story develops. We at the African Diaspora News channel, we appreciate your support greatly. Keep tuning in, keep spreading the word, like and subscribe, support the platform, sign up to the website, all that good stuff. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Richard Sudan. This is the African Diaspora News channel and we will see you next time. 250 years of slavery, 100 years of Jim Crow, sharecropping, the Ku Klux Klan, lynchings, bombings, mass incarceration, the separation and destruction of the black family. All of that has had an effect on our mind. Our mind needs to be decolonized. We today are experiencing mental slavery, not physical slavery as once our ancestors had to endure. In my book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, we take you through every step to start releasing the chains that's on your mind. He or she who controls the mind control the person. It is in a vested interest of the white supremacist system to keep your mind bogged down in a mental slavery, throwing entertainment, throwing drugs, throwing alcohol, anything they can at you to keep you bogged down. You got to free yourself from mental slavery. By purchasing our book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind today on Amazon. Make sure you share it with your family, share it with your friends. Everyone can benefit from decolonizing the mind because once your mind is decolonized, you will never be put to sleep again. Hello everyone. Please make sure you subscribe to the African Diaspora News Channel app on these platforms.